What's up guys, Silver here with part 7 of our lasso run through Halo Reach and this is New Alexandria and it's going to be very confusing uh, just because it's kind of a confusing map to begin with and there's no nav points since the blind skull is on so get ready. This green uh, logo I'm shooting at, that's the Synoviet Center, remember that. The orange one I'm shooting in the distance now, there's like an orange glowing panel, that is the uh, Virant Telecom Tower where uh, Claude Herrera, or not Claude Herrera, but Club Herrera is. And then the smoky one, or the one that's obscured by smoke over here on the right, the tall one over there on the right side when you spawn in, is the hospital. So uh, those are the three main towers where your main objectives are going to be. So remember that, the green glowing one, the orange glowing one, and the blue glowing one. And these three main objectives are always randomly assigned, so you never know what's going to be first, second, or third. But we were assigned the orange building first, but we're going to go to the blue building first, the hospital, because uh, we will be able to bypass the enemies in the... Uh, club if we go over to the hospital first. So here's the hospital. You can see that blue logo I'm shooting. That's where we normally would go into this building once we do go in there and get that uh, objective. But we're going to fly down here from that uh, point where we would have gone into that building, kind of down towards the left over here, and we're going to activate this switch. This switch is only present when the uh, Virant Telecom Tower objective is active. So since it's active, it was the first one we were assigned. We could fly over here and activate that switch. And this switch activates the club Easter egg where a bunch of the grunts and brutes who would normally be fighting you actually dance around in the club. So it activates a, a cool soundtrack as well. Never Surrender. And we're going to go change the song, though, to the Siege of Madrigal remix. And to do that, we're going to fly to the Orange Tower now where we're supposed to go. And you can see in the distance now up at the top of that building, uh, we have the big glowing orange panel. So that's how you could kind of uh, identify it. It's an easy way to pick it out amongst all the other buildings in the city here. We're going to fly over here, and you can see down towards the left, there's the landing pad where we're supposed to go, but we're going to go on top, like I mentioned, and we're going to change the song to the Seedra Magical, like I said. And the reason we're doing this is because when you go in here and you only flip the first switch, it will actually uh, have the enemies turn against you once you disable the comm jammer. But if you go in here with the second song playing that we're activating right now, on the top of this building you land, and then you go under these kind of slanted pipes, and under here is a switch... Once we do that, uh, the enemies will not turn against us once the uh, the comm jammer is destroyed. Only the brutes will, but uh, that's easier to take care of when you only have three brutes turning against you than the entire room of enemies turning against you. So we're going to fly down here, and there's still going to be two fuel rod turrets on the platform here, so we do still want to take those guys out, but there's not going to be any skirmishers, there's not going to be any brutes, and there's not going to be any grunts that we have to deal with, so that is good. But we'll just kind of straight back and forth until we take out these guys. Obviously, don't stand still because you'll be an easy target for those fuel rods. And then we'll move in here and land our falcon and head into the first of three objectives. There is health on the wall once you walk in here, so we could grab that if we need it. I think we're in pretty good shape, though, right now. It's right in the beginning of the mission. We didn't take too much damage at this point. We're going to walk in, and we're going to go to the right, and there's going to be some plasma grenades on the ground. So we want to grab those because we're going to use those to take out the brutes before they have a chance to turn against us. So we're going to go in here and you can see all the grunts are bobbing and weaving. Uh, the brutes are having a good time too. There's two plasma nades on the ground right there, so grab those. And we're going to back up to about here and you can see one of the brutes is at the bar here, kind of cleaning the bar. We're going to stick him and then immediately turn around and assassinate this DJ brute. And then we're going to go over here and there's another brute at a bar here, so we're going to stick this guy right away as well. We have a little bit of time before that second and third brute realize that I've killed the first brute and react to it. But you should definitely be able to assassinate that DJ Brute, and if you are unable to stick that third Brute, just keep your distance and start shooting him in the head with your DMR so you pop his helmet off, and then you can finish him off with the headshot. But now I've moved on to killing Grunts, and the reason I'm doing that is because I want a Plasma Pistol, which is going to make it easier to grab a Banshee later on in the mission. And then we're going to grab a Jetpack from this area as well. There are two Jetpacks on the ground floor, kind of under where we entered this area from. So we're going to go over there, there's going to be a bar. And uh, we could activate this switch at any time, really. So I'll activate it now before we grab those jetpacks. Why not? And then we're going to sprint over. And like I mentioned, we're going to go on the ground floor. And under the area where we came from, there are two jetpacks hanging out on the bar. And you can see there's a brute in here as well. This brute, for whatever reason, does not turn against you like the other uh, three do. So we're just going to let him live. He could just chill and uh, serve the grunts drinks over here. But we've made our appearance in the club, and we are going to peace out now. But we're moving back out to the Falcon, and like I mentioned earlier, we have three main objectives in this mission. 
and uh, there are actually two side missions in between those. So you got a main objective, side mission, main objective, side mission, main objective. And those two side missions are picked at random from a group of 10 side missions. So what I do on my side missions may not be uh, at all what you do on your side missions. So I'm actually going to skip over my two side missions that I get at random. And I'm going to show you all of them at the end of this video. So I'll have all 10 listed out and show you how to get to each one of them. Because again, there's no nav points due to the blind skull. So that makes it really, really hard to complete this just because you don't know where to go. But if you're looking for help on those side missions specifically, jump ahead to 1530 in this video, and that's when I start going into all 10 of the locations for those side objectives. So at this point, I've completed my first side objective, and I've been assigned the hospital for my second main objective. And I'm going to go over there now. The hospital is the blue logo. Remember that the blue logo is hospital, green is Synoviet, and orange is Virant Telecom Tower, a.k.a. Club Herrera. So we're going over to the blue hospital. You can see it in the distance there. It's the tall building with the blue logo on it. And there's also a smaller building connected to it, which is actually where we're going to land. But I'm going to actually ditch this Falcon entirely and let it kind of fall to the ground and explode and kill my two Marine buddies along with it. Uh, because I don't want them blowing up the Banshees because I want to actually hijack a Banshee. So I'm just going to bail out here. You don't have to do this as aggressively. But I'm just going to bail out here and I'm going to nice and slowly jetpack down to the uh, ground here or the building, the roof, whatever it is. And then we're just going to jetpack over here, which is where we actually need to enter the building from. Uh, you could actually just land here and then just kind of melee your two Marines to death if you would like. That's uh, a lot safer probably. But we're going to go over here and we're going to kill the four grunts that are kind of sleeping uh, in the doorway here. Sometimes they're sleeping, sometimes they're awake. Sometimes they wake up while you're assassinating them. But fortunately for this run-through, they actually stayed asleep for the whole time. We already have a plasma pistol, but if we didn't already get one uh, from a previous objective, we could get one here from these dead grunts. So worst case scenario, you will only have a plasma pistol to get one of the Banshees. But since we were assigned the Virant Telecom Tower before coming to the hospital, we fortunately have a jetpack to work with as well, which makes it a lot easier. If we only had the plasma pistol, we would be relying on the fact that the Banshee is flying at the building and high enough where we uh, plasma pistol it, overcharge plasma pistol it to stun it and it fall on the roof and we could grab it. But most of the time the Banshees like to fly along the edge, so they're not really going to land on the building if you plasma pistol them. At least for this building, it's not as common for them to fly over the building, but they will do it eventually. So you just got to be patient. But we have the jetpack for this run through, so we will take advantage. And you can see how easy that was uh, with the jetpack because the Banshees kind of fly along the edge of the building, like I mentioned, kind of in a slow straight line. So it's easy to jetpack into their path and just hijack them real quick. It is possible to run and jump into the path of the Banshee and hijack it, but that's tougher. It takes uh, really precise timing because you have to be really close to the Banshee and you're probably going to fall a bunch of times and miss. But anyway, we have the Banshee and I'm going to shoot off this wing. It doesn't matter which side. I'm actually going to shoot off both wings. But we're going to uh, push it through the doorway here because once you get out or once you get in the Banshee, the door, the automatic door that's open right now senses that you're not there anymore and it will just close and it could uh, crush the Banshee if the Banshee is right in the middle of it. So I'm going to knock the wings off and then kind of push it through so when I get in it doesn't uh, close the door and crush us and splatter us. But it is possible to get through here uh, just by kind of boosting through real quick. But you do risk uh, obviously getting crushed and splattered and why risk it? We're playing lasso here. And we do want to shoot the wings off uh, to begin with anyway, so we could take it down. We're going to go down the stairs here. And we're going to kind of wiggle back and forth. So kind of swoop to the left, swoop to the right, swoop to the left, and then back to the right to go down. But you can see my camera is actually not even showing my Banshee right now. The floor I'm seeing is the floor above me right now. But you kind of want to have the nose of the Banshee dragging across the ground uh, when you go around and down there. So that way you can make your way under some obstacles. But we're going to fly all the way down to the comm jammer with this Banshee. And depending on when we were assigned to the hospital as an objective, that will determine how we get out of here. So this trick I'm about to do will work if this is your first or second main objective. But if it's your third of three main objectives and you've already done the Virant Telecom Tower with the Club Herrera section and you've already done the Synoviet section, uh, this will not work. You want to jump ahead to 2230 in this video and it will show you how to easily get out in that scenario. But for this one, we're going to park the Banshee in the back right, grab the health on the wall if you need it to the left of that comm jammer, activate the comm jammer, and then jump into the Banshee in the corner here. But just stay here and then the game will eventually despawn the whole area you're in and you'll know when that happens because you won't see any walls or anything. You're just going to see a bunch of open sky. So just hang tight for a second. You'll know it when you see it. And when it happens, you want to hit start. So there it happened. We could see the cloudy sky. Just hit start and then save and quit immediately when that happens. And then we're going to go back to the main menu. And then we're going to select the playlist and hit resume. And we're going to start it up again. And once you do load into the map, you want to immediately get out of the Banshee. So we're going to load it up. We're going to bail out of the Banshee. And here we go. Uh, we have loaded in. We're going to bail. Here we are. And it's actually going to warp us out to the uh, starting area 
of this section. So we don't have to fight anybody going in. We don't have to fight anybody coming out. We've avoided a ton of headache. So that's the hospital. One thing I was going to say is uh, you might want to do this in this order that I'm doing it in where you get the jetpack because that makes getting the Banshee way easier. So you could just keep restarting the mission uh, until you get the Byron Telecom Tower objective first. And then that way you'll know you have a jetpack once you get to this section. But now we have uh, no way of getting off this thing. So what you do is either hit up or down on the D-pad. I forget what it is. And I don't know what it is on PC. So you want to check that out. But it's basically the button to call for evac. And then once you do that, a Falcon will be sent in for you to pick you up. It takes a while. It took like a minute and a half. So I skipped ahead here. And then another option, if you don't want to wait for the Falcon, is to try to grab another Banshee. But unfortunately, my Falcon is already weak. It got shot up a little bit on the way in here. But uh, that's all right. Uh, at any point, I should mention, uh, you could blow up your Falcon and call for evac. And you'll be sent a fresh new Falcon. So that is always an option, especially if you're smoking a lot. And you're finding that you're getting blown up pretty easily. Uh, you probably want to land somewhere safe and then blow up your Falcon and call for evac so you get a fresh one. But we're going to move over here. Remember that I skipped the uh, side mission, so we're going on to the third and final main objective here. This is the third main objective I was assigned. We are at Synoviet. Uh, that's the green building. Remember, it's the green uh, glowing logo. But we could actually get into this area from behind. Uh, we're supposed to land on the front section of this uh, building where there's like a helipad and you're supposed to land there by design, uh, but you could actually get in here through this area. There's kind of a rib cage section in the back where you could fly up and uh, bring your Falcon in and easily kill all the people in here, which would otherwise not be as easy. But I don't actually kill everybody in here. I usually just kill like the three or four brutes that are close by. And then there's a Jackal with a focus rifle who likes to try to, you know, blow me up with that. So I don't appreciate it. So I kill him too. And then I land right here, hop out, get in this elevator, and we're going to take a little ride Nice ride up. I like how the music is always different on here, too. So uh, you never know what you're going to get when you're uh, calmly going up here in the elevator. Then we're going to open the door, and it's an empty room. It's the map reflection, the remake of Ivory Tower. And there is Sprint right here, which we're going to grab. And we're going to juggle the jetpack over here right in front of the elevator. This is basically something to do if you've done the Virant Telecom Tower and therefore have a jetpack already, and you haven't done the hospital yet. So you want to keep the jetpack to get the Banshee to fly through uh, like we did previously. So I don't have to do it, obviously, because I already did the hospital. But this is just to show you uh, what to do if you want to keep your jetpack uh, after you use the sprint. So put the jetpack right in front of the uh, elevator there. I just grabbed some DMR down at the bottom mid there, which is always useful. And then we're going to run up to the comm jammer here, and we're going to wait for our sprint to recharge before activating it. Once you do sprint over here, a bugger will fly out of the wall here, and you just headshot him real quick for the easy kill. And then we could keep going, and we're going to sprint again. There might be another bugger or two that uh, takes some shots at you, but they shouldn't be able to do too much damage, and we're going to grab the jetpack if we want to. But otherwise, we're just going to go into the elevator, activate the switch, and then head down. We're going to get into our Falcon, and we will get a final objective. So we have the main three with uh, two side missions that were kind of sandwiched in between. And then we have our final objective here, number six, which is going to be... Uh, kill six shade turrets, basically, which are going to be uh, surrounding a big tower. So the biggest, tallest tower in this game, you can see it just flashed on the right side of the screen. In the distance, that is where we're going to go. There's going to be some phantoms that are dropping off six of those shades, and we will have to take out those shades to finish the mission. Then all of the enemies will disperse, and we could land on the uh, pad that comes out from the tower itself. And that will cue the cutscene, and we will head to the next mission. But before we do that, there's going to be a bunch of Banshees. You can see the current objective is destroy the anti-air turrets. So we're going to do that. Uh, there's a bunch of Banshees that are going to be in this area. So you want to be on the lookout for those guys, along with the shade turrets themselves, obviously. But we could just kind of hang back from the area and uh, take them out kind of at a sharp angle that they don't really appreciate. Because they're all shooting at the tower itself. So if you shoot them from behind, you're less likely to get uh, shot at. They're less likely to turn around and shoot at you. Because they're busy. They're busy shooting that tower. So we're just going to go in a circle here. Shoot them from uh, the side. Shoot them from behind. Shoot them from not the front, really. Because if you're in the front, you're kind of in the middle of the whole area. And then another one of the turrets may be able to uh, land some shots on you as well. And there's also a bunch of Banshees that may take interest in you, which you don't want. You don't want to be interesting to the Banshees. They may still take interest in you uh, while you're on the outskirts of this event, but they're less likely to do so. Uh, and it seems like there's some randomness to this fight because sometimes the Banshees really like to tear into you and other times they like to just kind of fly around lackadaisically, just doing whatever, reading some uh, magazines. I don't know what the Covenant read. Maybe some data pads or something. I don't know. But sometimes they're uh, 
they're tough sometimes they just kind of saunter along and don't really do much uh, which seems like it's the case so far hopefully that remains but we'll see we got a couple turrets left over here and we're going to up oh, I'm getting shot at now not great not great so I'm going to try to drift and fall away that's something I try to do when I'm getting shot at is I try to lose altitude uh, and obviously change direction as much as possible drift one way drift another way uh, so I'm kind of strafing while falling so it makes it hard for them to hit me and then also I like to try to get something in between me and them as soon as possible so I have this building now in between me and them and we took out the final turret so that is it the uh, banshees and phantoms tend to stop shooting you when you kill the final uh, shade turret but sometimes they still like to take a few shots at you so it's not 100% guaranteed but they are less likely to engage you once the objective is complete but then we're going to fly up onto the pad and that is the main three objectives along with the final objective now we're on to the side missions so i recorded all 10 of these side missions on easy because i just wanted to get to them so i could show you where they are on the map that's the main thing is actually getting to them because there's a ton of buildings and if you don't have any nav points it's really hard to actually find these uh objectives so i'm going to show you all of them in order uh of the alphabet alphabetical order so the first one is assist the pelican and when you get an objective, you could see in the uh, pause screen here, it says your objective right here. So you could uh, use this as a refresher if you forget what it is or you didn't hear it the first time. Uh, and it also pops up on your screen. You could see current objective on the top of the screen, assist the pelican. And that will show up even though the blind skull is on. But you can see here I'm in front of the hospital and we're going to turn to the left uh, from this point. And you could see here there's a cluster of buildings to the left right here. And we're actually going to fly over here. There's three buildings surrounding a central building. And that central building has a pelican on top of it. So we need to take out the turrets that are on these uh, buildings surrounding that pelican. So you can see here they're kind of on the edge of the building shooting down at the pelican. We're just going to take them out real quick. Uh, again, this is on easy just to illustrate where they are on the map. Uh, it's not too difficult, too much more difficult on lasso. Uh, you have a falcon, so it's easy to take out all of these enemies that are on the ground. So uh, we're going to watch the pelican fly away now. Safe and sound. And the next one we're going to do is... Defend Marines Against Brutes. So we are at the hospital again. We're going to turn to the left. And there's a building, uh, not the first building on the left, but kind of past that first building on the left. Uh, we come to this building right here. And that is where the Brutes will be if you have that side mission. So head over here, kill all the Brutes on this building, and you will be able to move on to your next objective. So this next one is Defend Marines Against Hunters. And we're going to go to Club Herrera or the Virant Telecom Tower. And you can see that's where we would normally land to go into this building. So we're going to turn to the right as we're facing that building. And the one building directly to the right right here is uh, the Hunter building. So this is the building with the Hunters on it. And we will kill them. The next one is Defend Marines Against Jackals. And for this one, we're back at the hospital. This is the building that's directly to the left of the uh, hospital once we're looking at the hospital. And uh, this is kind of near where the Brutes were. The Brutes are one building beyond this. But this is the first building to the left of the hospital. So... Fly over here, take out these jackals, and we will be done with this side mission. The next one is destroy the anti-air and infantry. So for this one, we're near the Synoviet building, and this is the green building, the one with the green logo on it. Uh, down to the left over there is where we would normally land if we didn't enter from behind in that ribcage section. And you can see the big green logo on this building. We're going to go behind it, and you're going to find that there's this big loop of a building, which is kind of unique in its own right. This is kind of a landmark in and of itself. Uh, but go to this big loop building... And on top is going to be the anti-air and infantry that we need to take out. So take it out. There's going to be, like it says, some anti-air guns uh, in the form of fuel rod turrets. And then there's going to be some infantry as well. What do you know? We're going to take these guys out real quick. And that will be that. So we're going to move on to the next one. We're back at the club. And this one is going to be, uh, as we're facing the club, it's going to be directly behind us. So we're going to turn around once we're done dealing with these banshees. And uh, it's actually back towards the loop, so if you want to just uh, use the loop as an identifier, the building to the right of the loop, or the building uh, in front of Club Herrera, however you want to look at it, is going to have some banshees uh, swirling around it. So we're going to add ourselves to the swirl and uh, eliminate them from the equation here. Speaking of banshees, this side objective is specifically banshees, but there could be banshees in all of the other objectives because they are just randomly flying around the map. So they could add themselves to any uh, of these side mission scenarios. But we are back at Synoviet now. We could see that on the lower left is where we would normally land if we played through this mission normally. And on the right is the rib cage. Up top is that logo, that green glowing logo. And uh, this next one here that we're doing is destroy the jammer and infantry. So on the opposite side of this building, uh, we are going to find, uh, again, towards the loop. 
in between the loop and Synoviet, the green building, we're going to find that there's a building with a comm jammer on it. And we're going to have to fight the enemies that are on foot here and then hop out, actually, and uh, deactivate the comm jammer. So it's like a fourth comm jammer that sometimes you have to deal with in this mission. So hop out of that Falcon once you've killed everybody, deactivate that comm jammer, and then hop back in that Falcon. And we'll move on to the next one, which is escort the Falcon. And this is the side objective where you actually have to escort Buck across the map. So there are actually three locations where he could be, so it's kind of like there's 12 uh, side missions. But we are in front of the hospital here, and if you look to the left, you can see that there's a building. So right when we're in front of this sign here at the hospital, directly to the left there is a building. That is the building you need to go to if he says, need escort on a classified op, send someone who knows how to fly a tight formation. So depending on the dialogue he delivers, that determines where you will pick him up, one of the three locations. So that is the one over here. Where I'm shooting is where he'll be hanging out, so go over here, you'll see a falcon. And then he'll uh, fly up and uh, through the city and just follow him and uh, protect him. And you'll complete the side objective. One of the other possible locations is here in front of the Synoviet building. You can see we're in the front where we're supposed to actually go into from, even though we kind of wrap around back. But we're going to start off at the top of the front of the building here. We're going to turn around to the right. This is the location he'll be in if he says, My guys got caught in a firefight in the Nemolos Tower. Roof collapsed. I gotta get over there and get them out. So he'll be over here on top of this roof where I'm shooting right now. And the third and final location where he could be is back over at Club Herrera. And this is the Virant Telecom Tower. We're gonna start off in the front here and then we're just gonna go wrap around back. And this building right behind it here is where Buck will be hovering over in its Falcon if he says, Phantom's got one of my squads pinned. I need to take it out and evac my troopers. So those are the three potential Buck locations, depending on what he says. But if you miss what he says or you just forget, you could just go to all three locations and he's bound to be at one of them. So there you go. But on to the last couple side missions. The next one is Kill Jackal Snipers. So we're back at the hospital here, and once we get here, we're going to turn around, and there's kind of three buildings, maybe four buildings, surrounding uh, this smaller central building. And atop these taller buildings, you can see there's jackals that are laying into these guys with focus rifles. Uh, these guys are easy to pick out and identify because you can see them from really far away, actually. So you know where they are, even though they don't have nav points on them. So just look for those beams of light and then just go to town on them. So we'll just do a short and quick little uh, loop here. Take out these jackals. They have no shielding or anything, so they're pretty easy to take out on any difficulty. And we're going to go to the final objective, neutralize elites and engineers. And we're back at the club, our favorite scene. And uh, as we're looking at the club, we're just going to turn around and the building directly behind us is the building we want to be at. So neutralize those elites and engineers. And that is the 10th of 10 objectives for those side missions. So you'll get two of those side missions assigned to you randomly throughout your lasso playthrough. So when you do come across those and you don't know where to go, now you know. And finally, this is the strategy you want to use if you got the hospital assigned to you last of your three objectives. You want to activate the comm jammer and then totally ignore the banshee. Do not get in it again or you'll get stuck in this building. So just activate the comm jammer and then you just want to turn around and go back the way you came. Uh, there's no specific path you need to take. You do want a jetpack though. Uh, I'm just kind of messing around up here. You don't need to be up here. Uh, and if you don't have a jetpack already, you should have gotten one at the Club Barrera section. But if you didn't pick one up, uh, there's one behind you, actually. We're running away from it. It's right behind the jammer. There's a couple of them just sitting there. So grab one of those, and then we'll move forward over here. And we're just going to jetpack to the top of this section, actually. So just go down here, jetpack up. Uh, there's still a bunch of grunts and jackals in this section, but we're going to jetpack up to here. And then we're going to jump and jetpack and crouch. And you can actually fit between the glass here and the top of the ceiling here. So you can kind of wedge yourself in there so you don't have to fight anybody coming up. And then once you get out here, you could grab a Banshee to fly to the final objective, or you could uh, call for an evac and get a Falcon. And with that, I believe all of the possible contingencies have been covered. Like I mentioned, somewhat confusing and not as straightforward as other missions. But that's it for Part 7, guys. Join me next time for Part 8, The Package. Thanks for watching, guys. If you found that video helpful, be sure to click on the Scorpion icon to subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. You can also check out some related guides by clicking on the videos on screen, and you can find links in the description for other social media links of mine. Stay tuned for more Halo guides, and I'll see you in the next one.